champions. LeBron James captures that elusive title he so desperately coveted. Training camp has come and gone. New faces in new places ready for a fresh chance of glory. 29 teams have their dreams shot down, but today they get back up. The Miami Heat walk with a bulletproof swagger that comes with being an NBA champion. But none of that matters, because today is a new season for everyone. Every team is here for one reason, with nothing to lose and everything to gain. Fire away. I'm bulletproof, nothing to lose. Fire away, fire away. Break a chain, you take your rain. Fire away, fire away. You shoot me down, but I won't fall. I am Titanium. You shoot me down, but I won't fall. I am Titanium. Anthony for three. Puts it in. Next by one. Here is the win. We're going to skate to one song, one song only. Hi, I'm Rudy Gay from the Memphis Grizzlies. You tune in to Believe the Hype with Tom and Benyon. Layups are for girls. Hi, this is Arnold. Your instructor. Down, up, down, up, down. Come on, more energy. I'm sure we'll have a lot more, um, a lot more Houston OKC trade chat throughout this episode. But I mean, let's start in the Atlantic to get this thing started, and um, start with a team who I hate with a passion: the Boston Celtics. Let's get them over and done with. Yeah, exactly. Um, I'm going to join you on the Boston uh, <laughs> hate wagon, but hate it uh, gone. Yeah. <laughs> the Celtics, you know, have done quite well um, this off season. Lost Ray Allen, obviously, which is a, a, a major loss for them. But I think what they've got in return in in Jason Terry is a guy that can come in. Uh, he can either start, you know, whether it's him or Avery Bradley, can come off the bench, um, you know, and score off the dribble, create his own shots. Um, and then also you look at uh, what they've done through the draft and getting guys like Fab Mello and, and, and Salinger as well. They're going to come in and take a lot of minutes away from, from Garnett, which he probably needs at this yeah. point in his career. So I think I'll give them an A+. Plus. Yeah, so would I. I mean, Salinger's definitely could potentially be you know, one of the top draft, one of the, t- the top players in this draft. And for a team like the Celtics to get him, I mean, it's just gonna it's just going to make them a lot better. And I mean, even losing Ray Allen and even picking up a guy like Courtney Lee who... You know, at the moment, it looks like he's going to be their starting shooting guard to, um, while Avery Bradley's out. You know, it's just it's just a good-looking lineup. And then even if you look at Jeff Green, who you know had a last year off, unfortunately, and he's come back now, and it actually looks like you know from his preseason numbers, even though I know, I know wh- how much we say that preseason doesn't <laughs> matter, um, he's putting up some solid numbers, and he could be worth uh, the hundred billion dollars that they paid for him. Yeah, exactly. Jeff Green's often the the forgotten man of, of the Boston Celtics, given that he you know, has spent quite some time out, but. The form that he's shown in preseason so far really does sort of hark back to the you know the form he was showing when he was first drafted you know by the Thunder and you know this looks like you know, it's it's almost like they're getting a you know, new signing in, in Jeff Green because you know they went so far yeah, last yeah, season definitely. without him so now adding that other dimension to the team you know Boston you know, maybe they go one better this year <laughs> maybe they do maybe they do and I mean I mean. You know, the rule of thumb, if you've got Darko Milicic on your side, you're not going to be very good. But, I mean, Boston can prove that wrong. Yeah, let's, uh, let's, let's see Detroit, how we go. Detroit did in, the, in his rookie year. But, yeah. Yeah. I think it would take a, a bit better yeah. team to carry to carry Darko. And uh, Nick Howe has actually uh, said that he can't see Fab Mello getting many minutes, to be fair, at the moment. Um, I, yeah, I, t- I tend to agree. I mean, at, at the moment, he's behind, what, Darko, you know, Kevin Garnett, Jason Collins. Um, but, I mean, I can see with a, a few injuries to some of these guys, we could see Fab having a few games again around about five, ten minutes, which would be interesting to see. I mean, he is a work, he is a work in progress. Yeah, exactly. I don't think at this stage you're going to really expect that much from, from him straight away. All he's going to do is come in, you know, take you know, offensive and defensive rebounds, get a few cheap points in the paint, and, and really just provide you know, a little bit of, of relief for the, for the starting yeah, team. Most yeah, most now, mate, let's move on to Team 2 in this preview. Um, the Brooklyn Nets. The much-hyped Brooklyn yeah. Nets. Yeah. Uh, Who? <laughs> the, 
we've uh, we've expressed our concern at the uh, the overhyping of the Nets. Uh, you know, this off season's been one massive marketing campaign from the Nets. But uh, do you believe the hype on the Nets? <laughs> no. <laughs> uh, it's basically, I mean, what they've done is they've they've rehashed their entire bench. I mean, they've they've wiped it all out and have replaced it with virtually the exact same shit. And um, just added Joe Johnson. And I mean, if you look at where the Nets finished last year, they were nowhere near the playoffs. Is Joe Johnson a guy who is good enough to, to take you from the doldrums into what people are saying and actually contending for the Atlantic Division? I think the fact that they have new jerseys is really tricking a lot of people into thinking yeah. that they're a new team. Basically, this is the Nets plus Joe Johnson, which to me, I think, will at best you know, maybe scrape into the playoffs, but uh, it'll all hinge on whether Darren Williams is you know, last year sort of trawling through the season, not really doing much Darren Williams or actually you know, focused Darren Williams. So he's going to be the real linchpin for this team. Yeah, definitely. And I mean, if you if you think about it, um, I mean, Herringbone Courts, you know, does do make people play better. This is true. Yeah. This, this, this I think I learnt that in like year seven. Yeah, it's all in the shoes. <laughs> it's all in the shoes. <laughs> and now let's move on to their crosstown rivals, the New York Knickerbockers over at Madison Square Garden. And I mean... They're now the, the oldest team in NBA history, and I mean, even if the 1947-1948 the uh, Minneapolis Lakers were playing right now, with their guys in their age now, this team will still be older. I think the Jason Kidd signing just tipped them over the edge, but I mean, that's that's the big thing that's coming out of the Knicks offseason, is, is the age that they've acquired, and I mean, yeah, you can sort of argue there's a fine line between getting experience and, and getting old guys, but I think... Yeah, the Knicks on paper look like they're very old, but having a guy like like Jason Kidd, who's you know, very experienced, is going to be a great floor general for this team. I think that was a great move. The Rasheed Wallace one, I don't want to get into that. <laughs> let's, <laughs> not, let's, not, let's not talk about Sheed. Marcus Camby, you know, good good backup for Tyson Chandler. I mean, he went down uh, hurt with a, with an injury the other day, so um, yeah, it's a great guy to have in the side. But I think yeah, it's it's a bit hit and miss with some of their. Their, their signings this summer. Yeah. Which Nick are you most excited to see play this year? Because I mean, they've got a lot of, you know, guys who are superstars or, or should be called superstars. You know, it depends on what side of the fence you sit. And they've got quite a, some, you know, good vets and some good up and coming players as well. Who are you most excited to see? You know, try and extend themselves this year in this roster. Look, to be honest, I think I'd, I really want to see Carmelo reach that next level uh, of play. He's really sort of hovering just underneath you know, his rookie classmates in, in Dwayne Wade and LeBron. Um, He's really not made that next next step into that elite class. He, he's pound for pound one of the best scorers, but you know he needs to he needs to start winning and he needs to start winning now. So I am excited to see how he uh, transfers his game into this yeah. new roster. But uh, yeah, outside of Melo, it's it's my fellow high top brother Iman yeah, Shumpert. There we go. <laughs> it's That's back. <laughs> um, yeah, Shump hurt at the moment, but I mean he had a great finish to last season, and I think yeah he's going to be a great defensive uh, two guard in this league. So once he gets back, it should be uh, yeah. Very interesting to see how he goes with the Knicks this year. Yeah, definitely. I'm really looking forward to seeing what Iman brings to the table in year two. Um, yeah, year two this year. I mean, we saw you know, Landry Fields in year two sort of, you know, fade off a little bit. And he was sort of the Iman of, of a couple of years ago. Yeah, definitely. And, but I'm really hoping that, that Shump sort of curves it and actually, you know, you know, solidifies himself in this team and, and for the future. And another guy I'm looking forward to seeing is Pablo Prigioni, the... The 48 year old point guard from Argentina, who we spoke about a couple of weeks ago in our um, in our Euros episode. Yeah, he's been lighting it up in in preseason. Some of those behind the back assists and really just wheeling and dealing. Mm-hmm. Arguably, I mean, it's it's the second unit for the Knicks, but you know, he looks he looks pretty handy, and, and he might end up being a little bit of a steal even uh, in his geriatric state yeah. at the moment. And Nick Howes asked if um, Chris Copeland has got signed, and but I, mean, I haven't heard anything. I, I haven't heard anything to suggest that he hasn't. Have you? Uh, I'm not too sure whether he has been signed, but I mean, given the way he's been playing <laughs> for the last couple of weeks, he's, he has to be signed, surely. And Adam Ryan has just said that uh, your high top fade uh, rivals Kenny Skywalker, circa 1989. So oh, thanks, Ryan. Praise. praise. If I can, if I can join that class, that's all I can ask for. <laughs> and Wobbly Balls. I mean, while we're, while we're answering questions, Wobbly <laughs> Balls also asked, um, "Who's on the cups?" Uh, you know the answer to that. It's Who else? Favorite Javale <laughs> McGee. <laughs> Now, uh, after being sidetracked, let's go to the team that I know you want to speak about more than any other team, the Philadelphia 76ers. The rebirth. We're back. <laughs> um, yeah, a great off-season for the 76ers, but also a sad one losing Andre Iguodala. But I think basketball-wise, the 76ers have gotten a lot better um, offensively. Defensively, we've probably let a little bit go um, with Andre Iguodala's you know, primitive defense and the way that he, that he is. 
but um, yeah, I think that Andrew Bynum coming into the side is, is only going to be good, so um, yeah, let's see, let's see how they go. Yeah, definitely. Um, I mean, they've got they've got a big big lineup if you think about it. I mean, Bynum as a starter into Spencer Hawes and Kwame Brown. That's they potentially have the biggest front court in the league right now. Yeah, exactly. I mean, size is one thing. Uh, whether it actually comes together and, 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 and works is another. But, um, you know, definitely you know, the team's gotten bigger. Um, rebounding is something we can always improve on. And, and given that, that great transition game that Philly was playing last year, that was one of our strengths. So to, to improve that, you know, another, another degree with Bynum is great. So um, on top of that, it's, it's going to be a big year for, for Evan Turner and Drew Holiday as well. So these are, these are two guys that I'm really looking forward to, to seeing you know, progress and develop. Yeah, definitely. I mean, this is a real you know, make or break year for Evan Turner. It's, what, year three now? Um, he's you know, shown glimpses over the time of, of, of the, the player he can be. And now with, with some of the guys that have left the roster, notably Iggy, you know, this really is, and, and Lou Williams, this really is the time for him to step up and prove that this is his team moving forward a lot, along with Andrew Bynum. And David Pendevsky makes a, a really good point. If Bynum's knees give, give way, the 76ers are in trouble. Do you think that, that's, that there's truth to that, or do you think that they, that they can win without Bynum? Oh, we're done if Bynum's gone. <laughs> <laughs> With no Bynum, it's, it's over. But um, re- realistically, we, we are pinning a lot of the hopes on, on Andrew Bynum. But I think the way that, that Philly are able to play that small ball so well and, and have Spencer Hawes playing at the, you know, at, at the centre position, it wouldn't be you know, too much of an adjustment given that they were playing that same sort of style last season. But you know, it's, it's definitely going to hurt any team when your best player is, is, is out. So let's, let's pray that... that that Bynum stays healthy this season, at least. So, do you agree with Luke? Seventy-six is minus Bynum equals lottery. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> I think we'll, we'll go close. Maybe you know, sneak into that eighth spot, but we'll, we'll struggle well, with that. Well, I mean, the East is not very deep. As yeah. Usual. I mean, it's it, it's hard to tell. We, we don't even know how Bynum's going to come in and affect this team. You know, we haven't really seen you know, seen him at all. So, um, you know, on paper, I think you know, without Bynum, we're in trouble. But uh, I mean. We'll, 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 we'll wait and see. We'll we've got, we've got plenty of months to find That's out, mate. It, yeah. <laughs> plenty of time to be proven wrong. And uh, now let's move on to the Toronto Raptors, who, you know, last year we said that they weren't even the best team in Canada. We said that the London Lightning in the Canadian National Basketball <laughs> League was better. You know, I think this year they probably give the Lightning a bit of a run for their money. You know, they've had some good off-season pickups, such as uh, Kyle Lowry and Landry Fields. How do you see their season winding up? I think this could be a surprising season for the Toronto Raptors. Um, Jonas Valanciunas as well has come yep. across. Um, you know, a potential all-star you know, in a couple of years. But um, you know, I, I, I could really see them you know, at least sort of being in that conversation with the Clevelands and the Detroits and the Washingtons for that sort of 7th, 8th, ninth sort of area of the, of the Eastern Conference. So I think, you know, I think we should expect some you know, pretty big things from the, from the Raptors. Yeah, I'm definitely you know, more excited about them this year than I have been in previous years. You know, they have improved their roster slightly. I think they sort of overpaid for Landry Fields, but I mean, that's the aim of the game to get guys to come to Toronto. You've got to overpay them. Yeah, exactly. Um, <laughs> And I'm I'm really excited with their backcourt. Actually, I think Terence Ross could potentially have have a pretty decent year. I've sort of liked what I've seen from him so far. And um, even having Jose Calderon as your bench leader, that's something that they've really missed. They haven't really had that that decent guy coming off the bench to be able to sort of lead that lead that core. And I know there's a lot of talk about will Jose stay or will they try and get rid of him using this trade bait. But in the time being, I think he's he's a great guy to have. You know, sitting on the end of sitting on your bench being a sixth man. Yeah, definitely. I think that's one thing that. You know, it doesn't really get spoken of a lot, um, and especially with with a team like Toronto, is is the depth. Because in the past, they've had you know semi sort of half decent starting units and just absolutely nothing on the on the bench. But now they have a very you know, relatively solid starting unit with some experienced pieces on the bench. So this is this is a year that you know I wouldn't say this. They're probably still in a transitional phase between being awful and and actually doing something <laughs> in this league. Not that awful. <laughs> yeah, but I think yeah, this is. Like you said, probably the most promising year that the, the Raptors have had in a while. So. Yeah, and I'm, look, I'm looking forward to it. I mean, I'm hoping to get over to Toronto and you know, getting a seat on, on court side because that's basically they're all available all the time. I think they're free, really. Yeah, they're given to you. <laughs> yeah. And now, mate, let's move across to the, um, the Central Division now and we'll start with a team who are going to be without their star for the start of this season and potentially all of it, Derek Rose and the Chicago Bulls. I think the Chicago Bulls are in a similar situation to Philadelphia. Without their without their main man, they 
Yeah, I've always maintained that, <laughs> that the Bulls are terrible without Derek Rose, and yeah, they they they're did, terrible. They're terrible. <laughs> they did prove me wrong last season in their in, in their running to the to the playoffs. They you know they were able to you know, string some wins together, um, you know, pretty consistently. But I think for the the distance of an 82 game season without you know the guy who your entire offense has run through, it's going to be very hard for them to make an impact this year. And you know, they have you know recruited a couple of guys in the off season and bringing back Kirk Heinrich and, and Nate Robinson, but it's you know I don't think it's enough. Yeah, no, neither do I. I mean, I've always been a big fan of Kirk Heinrich, and I'm actually happy to see him back in the in the Bulls fraternity again. But I mean, they they sort of held their own without Derek Rose, you know, towards the end of last season until they they met Philly in the playoffs. Um, yeah, when well, when they didn't have him. But you know, I can't I can't see this team really contending this year. I can see them, you know, because of how weak the the East actually is, being a playoff team. Um, but you know, guys such as like. You know, their bench guys like Bellinelli, you know, Taj Gibson, Jimmy Butler, they all really really need to step up, especially without Kyle Corver there, who was really such a lock on that bench. Yeah, exactly. It's it's gonna to be tough given that they sort of disbanded that bench unit with Omar Sheik and, and Kyle Corver and I mean they have brought guys in that are you know, quite capable of, of replacing them, but that's that's gonna really be a big thing is is to how they replace what they've lost and, and temporarily that is Derek Rose, how these guys come in and facilitate this offense uh, in, in Rose's absence, which I think is going to be tough. Yeah. Is this a year that the Florida fun boy, Joachim Noah, steps up and becomes an all-star? Possibly, because, I mean, you know, they, they've you know, re- revised the all-star uh, center uh, sort of mm. rulings now, so you know, it, it was probably easier for him to go in as a center, so I think it'll probably be a bit tough for him to make the all-star team, but I think this is kind of a year where, you, where you'd look to Joachim Noah to, to be seeing a lot more action, yeah, getting definitely. a lot more of the ball. He could so. potentially be a 2010 guy this year. Oh, I think he's got every yeah. every ability to be a 2010 guy, but it's yeah, it's one of those things you're going to keep waiting and waiting for him to, to reach that level. But you know, there's there's no time like now without without Rose in the side at least. And what do you want to see from Boozer this year? I want to see him just keeping his hairstyle to one <laughs> one consistent hairstyle and get rid of the the hybrid thing he was rocking last year. So not like your hybrid thing. Well, maybe like maybe go back maybe to the high top. top. Maybe yeah. maybe we start that. I mean, we've got a few in the league at the moment: and Norris Cole, Iman Shumpert. There's a few getting around, so I think... Do I need to get the high top instead of the... Who am I at the moment? I've got to be like... Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> we'll, let the, we'll let the fans answer that one. Fever, <laughs> fever. Yeah. <laughs> um, okay, now let's move to the Cleveland Cavaliers with Ozzie Kyrie back for year two as the point guard of one of the league's most relevant franchises. Yeah, exactly. It's a <laughs> um, you know, what was looking like was probably going to be a pretty decent year for Cleveland. And I think it could still well be, but when I say decent, it'll be finishing ninth or 10th. But you know they've added Dion Waiters as well this uh, this summer through the draft. Haven't really made too many other you know, big changes that's going to affect this franchise. So I think we could probably see Kyrie take his game to the next level. And you know you'd like to think that the progress he showed last year would you know, would indicate that he will get to that next level. But yeah, yeah, it's yeah. I don't think there's going to be too much to be uh, cheering for in Cleveland. Definitely. And I think um, some rumblings that I've heard around Cav Nation is that they're not actually very happy at the moment with how Dion Waiters has been playing. So. I mean, passing up on some of the guys they passed up on to pick up Dion Waiters, and it looks like he potentially could still sit behind the likes of, you know, Booby Gibson and CJ uh, Miles in the actual pecking order of the yeah, shooting guard position. It's not, <laughs> it's not ideal, especially, you know, when you look at the guys that they've lost over the last couple of years. Yeah, absolutely. And you'd be kind of looking for a guy like Dion Waiters to to be good right now. You want him to be your second scorer. You know, Kyrie Irving's obviously going to be the facilitator of this team, but he'll, he'll lead them in points as well. But you really need Dion Waiters to come in and, and make an yeah. impact now. If, if anything relevant is going to happen to the Cavaliers this season, yeah, definitely. And Adam Ro- and uh, Adam Ryan has just said that um, I look a bit like a young uh, Mark Price, so I think that's that's high praise considering I actually based my game off him. <laughs> you shouldn't have told him that. It's <laughs> all right. We'll take that. Yeah. Um, I really think that this has to be a year where Tristan Thompson. I mean, he's sort of. Uh, he really has to step up this year. Last year, his rookie year, he sort of, you know, had games which were very rookie-esque. I mean, he had some okay games and some absolutely shocking games. But, I mean, if this team is going to contend and, you know, potentially snag that eighth spot in the East, you know, I think we're going to have to really need something big, see something big from him. Yeah, definitely. I think it's, it's another one of those situations where you see a guy with such great potential. And, you know, I think the Cavaliers, they're, they're very eager to get back to, to success because after the heartbreak of LeBron leaving, you know, they, they, I don't think they can handle being crap for much longer. I think they want to be good today, but that's going to take time. I, I don't think this is going to be the year Thompson you know, breaks out and becomes a you know, relevant forward in this league, but no. <laughs> <laughs> I think you definitely need to improve yeah. play from him, and, and you know, I think that's going to come with Kyrie Irving playing better as well. He's, he's yeah. the guy that's going to make other guys yeah. better on the team, so it's not, you know, not out of reach. And, I mean, we did see that last year. I mean, the Cavs 
were good regardless of what four guys they had on the court with Kyrie Irving. They were good every time Kyrie Irving was on there. He made everyone else better out there. And they were terrible when he wasn't on the court. They were terrible. <laughs> yeah, so he's, he's really the X Factor for the Cavs. So. Now, mate, let's move on to a joke of a franchise, the Detroit Pistons. You know, they are, you know, they're a team whose best free agency pickup was Corey McGetty. Are they worth talking about? Uh, look, I think they have a little bit of relevance uh, in, in, you know, in pre-season, but as we've always said, pre-season is garbage, so let's move straight on. To the Indiana Pacers. Absolutely. And, um, I mean, I'm so excited about this Indiana Pacers season coming out this year. They had such a great season last year, and they're just looking to build on it. You know, they've added some, some you know, great additions to this roster, um, and I, I just you know, bring Ian Mahimi in to come on the bench to, to back up Roy Hibbert. Um, they're just going to be red hot this year, I mean... Paul George sort of broke broke out in the league last year, and then you got Danny Granger who became an All Star for the first time. You know, Roy Hibbert, All Star as well. Exactly. You know, yeah. This is going to be a big year for the Indiana Pacers, and I actually see them being one of the top two teams in the East. You know, I think given the, the quality of teams that are in the Eastern Conference, I, I mean, I, I never expected the the Pacers to get to where they did last season. So it's not you know beyond. Well, they were only. A, Borderline a game and a half away from actually winning the East. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. exactly. They, you know, they stuck it to the Miami Heat, which, you know, myself included, no one you know, thought they were going you know, to have any chance. But I mean, they have gotten, an, you know, a little bit older. I guess more experience uh, from that. Uh, David West was a great pickup from last oh, season, yeah. and he's he's really balanced out this this team. And and also, you know, adding a, a young athletic guy like like Gerald Green, it's you know going to add a little bit more excitement to a very sleepy Indiana Pacers. Yeah, definitely. I mean, Gerald Green was. I, I found it funny how, you know, sort of when he broke into the league, he was, you know, this amazing dunk guy with all these highlights and stuff like that, and then he just sort of faded to obscurity, and then now it's like the green revival right now, and, you know, everyone's re-remembering how good he is and Absolutely. how good his dunks are. He's, he's definitely going to be great to have for them coming off the bench. Yeah, he's he, he's one of the best athletes, you know, in, in, in the game, so having a guy like him that can be a little bit of an X factor, you know, it's really going to go either way with Gerald Green, whether he gets on the end of a lot of alley-oops or doesn't really do too much, but... You know, I think you know, I think he's only going to make the paces better. If, if and the know. reason why I think they're a contender as well is they've got a core piece to, to be a contender, which is a dorky white guy in Tyler Hansbrough. Absolutely. Yeah, that's every team needs a dorky white guy. The Luke, the, Luke Walton rule. And they've got two Hansboroughs now too, so they're twice yeah, as well, yeah. <laughs> Nice. And, mate, let's move on to uh, the Milwaukee Bucks, who, ladies and gentlemen, Tobias Harris is now an NBA starter, thanks to the Milwaukee Bucks. Thanks for nothing, Milwaukee. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Let's ship the Bucks to Yeah, they're right. done. <laughs> yeah, they're done. I mean, yeah, shout out to Samuel Dallin B. He's still a star in the NBA. Congratulations. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm expecting nothing from the Bucks this season. All right, let's move on to the Southeast, Southeast Division now and talk about a team which, you know, sort of has been adopted as my second team, according to a lot of people, the, uh, the Atlanta Hawks. Oh, mate, you, you've thrown... Yeah, you've thrown the Atlanta Hawks into some serious predictions over the, over the past season. But, um, yeah, I, I think, you know, they've... They're really building you know, for the future and getting rid of um, of Joe Johnson. They've opened themselves up to to bring a guy like Lou Williams in. Uh, you know, he's younger. He's not going to cost as much money. And they've still got their their main pieces in, in Josh Smith and, and Al Horford as well. So yeah, they haven't really, I don't think, gotten too much worse for, for what they've gained, sort of, you know, financially. Yeah, mm-hmm. and I mean they've they've got Lou Williams coming off the bench as well, and we've seen how how good he can be in that sort of position. You know, playing behind um, playing behind uh, Jeff Teague and, and Anthony Morrow for that guard position and. I mean, Cole Corver as well, they've picked up. I mean, Corver will be starting for them, I think, uh, this year, which is sort of, you know, rehashing the old 76ers Corver for him. Yeah, and, absolutely. Uh, I still think it's a very deadly lineup and it's a great side. And, um, I mean, I, I think that they they won't win their division. But I think that's going to be wrapped up to Miami. That, that they'll, def- they'll definitely be number two in there. And I, I think that they're, once again this year, they're going to be a team you're going to have to watch out come the playoffs. Not again. They've all, <laughs> mate, they've all been there, done that. Not they, again. <laughs> Yeah, no. Back I, on I the Hawks this year. Mate, okay. All mate, right. Talk, I'll, talk to me. In, talk to me in six months' time. We're really going to be hyping up the Hawks. Anyway. Okay. All right. All right. I'll, I'll eat my hat if the Hawks are good. Yeah. Plus they got Deshaun Stevenson. And, you know. You know. He knows how to party. He does. He you know, does. You know, he's going to be wanting to win that title so that he can have another championship after party where he gets arrested for breaking into his old home. And God bless. God bless yeah. Deshaun Stevenson. <laughs> got to love him. All right. Let's move on to the uh, Charlotte Bobcats. Who? They're terrible. Let's be honest. They're not. They're not going to be a contender. They're not going to make the playoffs this year. But no, we're seeing signs of improvement out of them. Yeah, I like the Bobcats yeah. this year. They, they seem like they're actually on track to be doing the right thing this year. They've, you know, done fantastically to get um, Kid Gilchrist in the draft. Yeah. yeah, I mean, he's 
going to provide a lot of hustle and a lot of energy for this team. And, and he also is going to provide that winning attitude that the Bobcats absolutely don't have. So he's been a great pick-up. And, and also Kemba Walker is another year older. He's going to be a lot more polished this season. So it's you know, not... Yeah, there's, there's things to look forward to for the Bobcats. Yeah, definitely. I mean, they're, they're another team that have got quite a quite a big backcourt. We're starting to see this sort of happen in the East. Not great players, uh, sorry, front court. Not great players in the front court, but you know, sort of you know, decent big bodies, which is something we haven't seen in the East before. With um, I mean, Brendan Haywood and Bisbark Biombo starting. That's a that's a pretty big starting front court. And then I mean, you got uh, Byron Mullins behind them, and then Desinger Diop, Tyrus Thomas. You know, that's. There's a bit of size in there, and that's something that you know a lot of teams are going to have to think about. Yeah, I mean, if they can't beat teams, they might as well beat them up. Yeah, exactly. And I mean, I'm really excited to see um, Kemba Walker and then his uh, run, new backmate running partner, Roman Sessions, seeing what they can they can do together this year in the in the backcourt. You because know, that's they're two you know pretty decent point guards in a pretty terrible team, and you know they should be able to find you know guys like Michael Gill this open. Exactly, and also Ben Gordon as well. He came across oh, yeah, as, as part of that McGetty trade, so yeah. it's a bit of a nothing trade, but still. Yeah. <laughs> but no, I think Michael Kidd Gilchrist definitely is going to bring a winning culture to this franchise. I mean, he, everywhere he's been, he's won, and this is exactly what they've needed. I mean, he wasn't the most talented player in the draft, but he's definitely the guy who, if you think, of, if you think a guy who would want to have that winning mentality and win now, it's definitely Michael Kidd Gilchrist. Absolutely, and, and also positionally as well, they've been awful on the wing for years so getting a solid guy that's going to come in and play you know play the three really well he's going to contribute he's probably not going to score buckets and buckets of points but I think his energy levels and, and attitude is yeah he's going to instantly make this team better um, so he's going to be a 30 minute a night guy I think I think he's definitely going to have a big impact this year yeah definitely now mate let's jump on Southwest Airlines and uh, fly down to South Beach and have a chat about the Miami Heatles oh absolutely they're back back to defend can they do it <laughs> Yeah, they'll do it. Yeah. I mean, oh, just gave away my prediction, but that's all right. You can, you can stop watching now. But, um, yeah, no, the Miami Heat, they're, they're looking even more scary this year than they were last year, so you've got to obviously think that they're going to be, you know, there in Game 7 of the NBA, or Game 4 of the NBA Finals. <laughs> because, I mean, to have LeBron James, you know, Chris Bosh, Dwayne Wade in your roster, and then, you know, lose a couple of, you know, big players who were injured, a lot of the time and add them and then add, you know, the likes of Ray Allen and Rashad Lewis to that. It's just gonna get scary. I mean they're playing small ball now and having, you know, the best three point shooter of all time and a guy who if he's open is money from three, you know, to be there when like LeBron James and Dwayne Wade are getting those double teams down low and just flick it out to them. You know, there, there's no way to defend this team now. You can't. <laughs> You've hit the nail on the head. It's scary because yeah. if you think about it it's hard to win an NBA championship, but it's even harder to win two NBA championships. So if you can get better you know, in between the two of them, it's you know, it, it's, it's scary, for the, especially for the Eastern Conference teams that are going to have a tough time playing against this, yeah. this very fast and you know, great shooting team because you know, even you know, guys like Mario Chalmers can knock down the three, Mike Miller can still knock down the three. Everyone can knock down the three for Miami, so... Yeah, I know. Chris Bosch can knock down the three. Yeah, Chris Bosch has. <laughs> in the playoffs. I reckon even Dexter Pittman can probably knock down a three or two in training. Probably. If you move the three-point line into the feeble yeah. line. Yeah, we'll, <laughs> That's right, we'll let it go. Yeah, definitely. But, I, honestly, I think it's going to be very tough for, for the Miami Heat to, to lose the NBA title because they're going to definitely be you know, in the Eastern Conference Finals. Mm. It's going to take a superhuman effort from whether it be a, a Knicks or a, a Celtics or a Sixers or a Pacers, whoever, or the Hawks, the Hawks. <laughs> whoever, <laughs> whoever gets there. Um, so really, it's, yeah. it, they're playing up until then to, to go into the NBA Finals. So it's, yeah, yeah I'm Definitely. terrified. And I'm sure we'll be talking about them a lot more over over the next few months as well. But I'd like to just quickly jump back to the Charlotte Bobcats. And we've got a question from, I believe the Hype Superfan from Denver, Wobbly O'Ball, who said, is this off-season a fluke or is MJ figuring it out? I'm going to call it dumb luck. <laughs> I think if you have enough goes, if you roll the dice enough times, eventually you're going to get the number that you're after. And he's had a lot of dud moves in the past, so I'm not quite ready to, to give him the tick of approval yet. Do you think if he got on the phone about 10 minutes before Houston, he could have had James Harden in his roster? Uh, maybe. What, what would he have moved? Uh, they've got some pretty good washing machines there that they've acquired over the years. Yeah, a few Kelvinators, a few bags of magic beans, perhaps. I don't know, yeah. but uh, yeah, I'm not, I'm not going to wrap his negotiating skills just yet. I think. No, not yet. <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, we'll see come later on this year because obviously that roster does need to make quite a few more, you know, moves in it to, to you know, contend. We'll see if they're going to be more active throughout this season. And the hardest part is attracting players to actually come. And play there. I mean, that's it's a destination where no one really wants to go or, or be associated with. So not at all. If you start winning and start winning in style, then you know, people are going to you know, 
pay yeah, attention. It, it really it really pays to know, like, even the, the actual name Bobcats doesn't really want to be a part of the franchise anymore. No. Half the names run away, and then now just the Cats. Yeah, the, the Dallas Mavericks style Cats. I'm not, not too sold on that. The cool Cats? Yeah. Pizza cakes? <laughs> Summarise? Yeah, let's yeah. <laughs> we'll leave it at that. Yeah, we will, man. Now, mate, let's move across to uh, the Orlando Magic. They're in trouble. Yeah. <laughs> they are in for a torrid year this year. It's definitely a rebuilding year. Um, Aaron Aflalo is going to have the ball in his hands all the time. JJ Reddy is going to shoot a thousand threes, and they're going to win no games. Who will be the guy when they all come off the bench, and you know, the superstar comes onto the court last with his name called out? Who's going to be the guy whose name is called last? And officially, like the star of the I don't, game. I don't want to say it, but I have a bad feeling it might be Big Baby Davis. <laughs> I think he's the franchise player. Yeah, I mean, Jameer Nelson. Is that an all star? Does anyone like Jameer Nelson? <laughs> I think it's Big Baby. It has to be Big Baby. I think Big Baby is going to be the guy who, you know, is the, <laughs> is, gonna, the is, star is, of the is team. Is he going to lead the huddle? The I think maybe Al Harrington might be <laughs> in charge of the huddle, but. Yeah, I think I think Big Baby's going to get the uh, the last call out. Yeah, definitely. And I mean, they've got Josh McRoberts on their roster as well. Oh, enough said. <laughs> How angry are Magic fans this is? Yeah. And and uh, da- David says that he thinks the Magic are going to be 22 and 60. Do you agree with that? I think that's about right. I think there's 22 games that, uh, that the Magic can win. But, yeah, it's, it's can't be too yeah. happy with that. Yeah, you don't play you don't play the Detroit Pistons 22 times in a season though. No, they might play the Bobcats a few times. Yeah, yeah there's there's options. There's there options. is definitely. Now let's move on to a team I'm really excited to talk about at the moment, the Washington Wizards. I loved what they did uh, on the trade deadline last season, and I love who, what that, what's happened with them in the offseason, picking up Bradley Beal in the draft. It's a good move for them, and I mean, I think when, when John Wall's you know, fit and healthy, they're going to be tough to beat. Yeah, I never thought I'd say that the Wizards could be in the playoffs <laughs> for a long time, but they've done really well in, you know, in restructuring this team. They've gotten rid of a couple of the knuckleheads in, in Nick Young and, and JaVal McGee as much as we love them but mm. I think the culture of the Wizards is starting to turn around a little bit and you know, investing in, in, in guys like Bradley Beal and, and John Wall as their, as their backcourt I think that's going to be a really solid foundation for this team. Yeah definitely and getting guys in like, like Nene who you know is a guy who comes from a bit of a winning culture um, in, like, at the at the Denver Nuggets and you know a guy like Emeka Okafor who's a, a proven professional and definitely you know brings a lot brings a lot more than a guy like Javel McGee, the great man himself. But I think the big thing is it, it's it's the attitude of the guys that they've brought in and mm. the guys like Okafor, yeah. Trevor Ariza, and then they, these are mature guys. They're here to play basketball and they they'll do a job and they'll also you know they'll help out the younger guys much better than you know, some of the <laughs> the former Wizards would be able to. And to be honest, that's all that John Wall's really asked for. I mean, he's never come out and said it, but you can tell that's all he's really asked for. You know, Every getting rid of Swaggy P and and Javale McGee, who even though since they've left have sort of you know turned themselves around. So yeah, it's sort of exactly. Like I, th- I think it was. I don't think those two are ever going to, to develop that well while they're at the Wizards, but it's worked out well for them. All that John Moore's ever wanted is, is guys that know how to play basketball and basically aren't goons. Yeah, exactly, <laughs> and now he's got it. So, I mean, I think they're going to be definitely be a team to who will be there or thereabouts contending for the playoffs towards the end. But we'll go into this, mate. What's your playoff? What's your one through eight? Uh, my one through eight. Um, all right, I'll start with... Um, we'll go eight through one. Um, sneaking in at number eight, I think the Derek Rose, the Chicago Bulls, um, are going to struggle to do much without him. But depending on when he comes back, if it's January or February, he might be able to sneak them back into the playoffs. Uh, at seven, I've got the Brooklyn Nets. Yeah, keep going. Come on, the Brooklyn Nets are a little bit better. I, th- I think Darren Williams is going to play a lot. Just, just only like 15 minutes ago, you said that, that adding Joe Johnson to your team doesn't make them... Doesn't it makes them a little bit better. <laughs> <laughs> just because you hate the Nets. At six, I've got your Atlanta Hawks. They're there. They're in six. Thanks, mate. At five, I've got the Philadelphia 76ers. At four, the New York Knicks. Three, Indiana Pacers. And then Boston at number two. And then Miami, obviously, at number one. Relatively similar to mine. Right, talk um, me through, talk me number through. Number eight, I've got the Washington Wizards. I've got them sneaking. You've got them sneaking. I mean, if you just, if you just look at if you look at their roster, you know, as what we said, they have improved. They have got a lot better, and how they were playing towards the end of last season, you know, just sort of it, it looks like a completely different team. And in a, a division, in, in a conference that isn't very deep, I can see them definitely being a team that could be 500 or, or above. Yeah, I think based on last year, this is the next step for them to mm. maybe sneak in. So I, yeah, I, I buy that. Number seven, I've got the Chicago Bulls. 
I just I think that even if Derek Rose is out for the entire season, they've still got you know the big players and the guys around there to to, to sneak them into the playoffs. Okay, I'll take seven. Uh, number six has got your Philadelphia 76ers. Six. Uh, they, they jump a little bit. <laughs> six. But I know. <laughs> I know, but if you have a look at the other guys in your division, I think I've got Boston at five, New York at four. Yeah. There's not going to be much between those three teams, I don't think, to be honest. Yeah, I think push comes to shove. When, once you get those teams against each other, it, it'll be hard for Philly to, mm. to come out on top, so I'll, I'll, I'll wear it for now. Then I've got a- ATL at number three. <laughs> <laughs> no. Okay. Well, uh, should, should, we, should, we some, should we put some bet on here? All right, uh, what, what are we going for here? I don't know, mate. What are you... The Atlanta Hawks... Finish above the Philadelphia 76ers. Yep. And I'll come up with something. You'll come up with something. Uh, but we'll shake on it now. Yeah, we'll <laughs> shake on it now. Maybe, maybe even the guys uh, playing with us at home can, can think of a good bet for us to do for one of us if the Atlanta Hawks go better than the 76ers or, 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 or vice versa. <laughs> and then number two, Indiana. Number one, Miami. And unfortunately, da- unfortunately, David, we don't have any Toronto Raptors in there, but I've got them around about ninth or tenth. Look, I'm, I, I've not got them in, in the playoffs, but I, I won't be surprised if they are there. Um, I'm rooting for them, but yeah, same. I think yeah, it's going to be very congested in that, that 7th through 11th. Oh, yeah, definitely. With teams like Cleveland, Detroit, Washington, it's, it's going to be chockers. So. Yeah, it will be. And so, I mean, I've got no, obviously no Nets in there. I, I didn't want to say anything. You, you don't like the Nets. I no. love the Nets. It's all right. <laughs> I, just, I, I just don't think that, I just don't think that they are, they've improved as much as you know, marketing says they have. Marketing has been fantastic. Yeah, I mean, they're, 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 they're the best marketed team in the NBA. But Absolutely. I mean, marketing doesn't give you 10 plus wins a game. Yeah, it day. can motivate the crowd, which will motivate the players. Yeah, it's just a flow on effect thing. Yeah. Uh, we'll agree to disagree. Yeah, we'll, agree, we'll, we'll agree to disagree, <laughs> mate. Now, let's jump back on the plane, get those frequent flyers working, and go west. Great track, Boney M. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, we'll start in the Southwest Division with uh, the Dallas Mavericks, who are a team who. Wow, they look a lot different to what we've seen in the last couple of years of them. They've really taken a hit. It's it's hard to think that you know they won the NBA championship not you know a season ago. They they, they were the champs, but you, know, you look at the roster they have now to what they won with, and it's very different and doesn't look very doesn't look very promising for the for the Mavs this season. Well, I'll give them credit. It does look a lot better than it looks around about the time that free agency started. Yeah. I mean, they had they had some good moves towards the end of there, like getting guys like Elton Brand and Chris Kamen in to sort of at least make them look semi-respectable. But, I mean, it's not very well, especially with Dirk Nowitzki now. It looks like he's going to be spending a lot of time on the on the sideline towards the start of the season. And, you know, that's, that's scary. I mean, this starting lineup of Kamen, Brand, Marion, OJ Mayo, Darren Collison, there's, there's one guy there from their championship team and only one guy there from last season as well. Yeah, that's it's a new team, it, and that, that's going to be difficult for them to, to get all these new guys to come in together and yeah, and try and you know, get themselves to a position where they are doing okay. When Dirk comes back, for them to sort of reach that level that you know they they feel they should probably be at. Um, you know, a lot of that pressure is going to fall on OJ Mayo as well. I think he's you know, he, he has to deliver this year for the Mavericks. I think you know I, I think he's going to be starting for them. Yeah, I think he will be as well. I mean, this is his. As what we've said before, this is the year that he has to now, you know, make that leap. You know, he doesn't have anyone around him um, who, like, such as like a Tony Allen or a, or a, um, or a. He was on our podcast. I can't remember his name. Rudy Not, Gay. Rudy Gay. <laughs> sorry, I wasn't trying to pick up. I actually legitimately forgot Rudy Gay's name. Um, shout out to Rudy. <laughs> yeah, shout out to Rudy. Um, he doesn't have any of those guys around him to sort of, you know, take away from his minutes or take away from his shots. And you know, so now this is his time to prove that he is as good as everyone said he could potentially could be when he came into this league. Definitely. And the other thing is, the Mavericks don't really have a proven scoring machine outside of Nowitzki. And now that he's gone for six, eight weeks, there's yeah. going to be a lot of a lot of points that need scoring. And I think a lot of that's going to fall on, on OJ Mayo. And I think, I, I don't want to see the Dallas Mavericks rush Dirk Nowitzki back in because he's played a lot of minutes over the last few seasons. You know, even if you add in all the way back to 2010 when he was playing for when he was like, you know, training with his national team, didn't end up playing for them in the end. But yeah, I think it's going to be hard to, to not rush him back though, because mm. to be honest, I can't really see this Mavericks team being very good straight away. They're going to need a month or so to, to try and yeah. gel. So it, you'd like to think they think better of it, but it wouldn't surprise me if they really tried to, to push Dirk through. Yeah, definitely. Now man, let's move on to the team of the moment. The Houston Rockets. Oh, Do mate. you fear the beard down there in Houston? Uh, not really. <laughs> I, I think it's going to be great for him. Uh, it's going to be great for Jeremy Lin. He's he's happy. He's actually got a, a proven you know, star, I guess, on, on his side now. So 
Um, yeah, it's, it's great for them, but whether they're actually going to turn that into a lot of wins, I, I probably don't think so. I don't think they're. I don't think they're going to make the playoffs. No. It'll be, it'll be hard. They might, you know, given the quality of teams that's in the Western Conference, it's going to be a tough ask for, for Harden to come in and, and make them brilliant straight away. Yeah, it will be. I mean, this team is not really you know, a team that, that you can really scream you know, playoffs contender at all. And, I mean, it, it really does look like a work in progress. And, I mean, James Harden coming in is great is great for the team. I mean, it gives them a guy who's, who's a proven winner. You know, he... he he was in the NBA gold medals. Last year. Yeah, he's, he's won gold medals. He's got he's got a kick-ass beard. But no, I mean guys like I mean Omar Omar Ashik really isn't. I don't think is potentially at the level where he should be a starter no, at the moment. Like he's, he's for the money he's getting in the starting yeah. position, he'll probably have. I don't think he's he's quite bridged that gap. Yeah, I think that I mean it's the the West is isn't as deep as it used to be. I mean, there's probably are only six guaranteed teams here, and then seven to seven through ten to eleven. You know, it's really anyone's ball game to guess, but. I don't really see this this Rockets, you know, having you know a sustained run or something like that to be able to push them into the conversation. Yeah, I think it's going to take another Lynch Sanity style run for them to be anywhere near relevant. Do you think it's possible? Do you think he can do that again? I I don't know. I don't, I don't really want to make any judgment calls on Jeremy <laughs> Lin. I mean, he just sort of you know surprises everyone every time. I mean, I'd love to see Lynch Sanity continue into Houston. I think that'll be great for the game, great for Houston. I mean, Houston is a pretty big basketball city. Yeah, I mean, definitely. Yeah, I mean, for I mean the Rocket, the Rockets are big there as well, and the actual city is, loves their basketball there. So it's exactly what we want to see. And I mean, but I really don't want to make any calls either way because one, I don't want to jinx him. I want to see him put <laughs> again. Yeah, look, to be, I think it's going to be hard to replicate that that run of form. But um, to be honest, I, I don't think that the Rockets are going to be. Yeah, I don't think they're going to be relevant uh, for at least a couple of years until they make a few moves that that you know can turn them into a, a decent you know playoff team. They do have the general manager though that does always make sure his team's over-indexed on what everyone says about them. This is true. He's, he's been wheeling and dealing. Uh, so, yeah. Well, just, just <laughs> <his deal> today. <laughs> exactly. Who knows what he's capable of. Um, if, uh, Luke's just said, if nothing else, Rockets are now relevant again in the NBA thanks to today's trade. Oh, there you go, guys. There, there it is. Oh, yeah. I, I think there'll be a lot more attention on the Rockets than yeah, probably definitely. would have been they won't. T- two hours ago. I'll say they're not going to finish last now. In the no, West, not in the at West. all. They're, I was sort they're of definitely better. Be around there. Yeah. But, yeah, I mean, they're definitely... I, I still think that I'm going to see one or two moves from them to, to be a playoff contender. And I think it's going to be tough for Harden going from a great team in Oklahoma City where he doesn't really have that much responsibility. He just comes in, shoots a little bit. You know, Kevin Durant and Russell Westbrook really, they've been handling a lot of the pressure. Now a lot of that pressure is going to fall on Harden in Houston and whether you know, he's and whether he can handle that's really good. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. I guess we now get to see if James Harden really is as good a player as people see he is. Because, I mean, the last we saw of him in an NBA uniform in the in the NBA Finals last year, he wasn't very good. He now, was, yeah, he stank yeah. in the Finals. He was no good. And so now it's time for us to see if he can carry a team on his back, if he can do all these things that people have been saying that he, he can do, even though he hasn't had the opportunity to. I think I think he can do it. I think given the starting role, I think he's going to be good. But whether that's going to make the entire franchise that good, I don't think so. Yeah, definitely. All right, let's move across to the uh, Memphis Grizzlies now. Are you expecting another, another big year from Grizz Nation? I think so. I think so. Rudy uh, Gay touched on it. They're healthy. They're, yeah. they're actually healthy for once. And that seems to be the, the theme with the Memphis Grizzlies is someone it, someone big is hurt. Whereas now, everyone's back on deck. They do look you know, like they could you know, possibly you know, improve on last season. You know, they, you know, they were unlucky, I think, in the, in the playoffs last year. So I think this is you know, a great year of potential you know, for the Grizzlies to actually do something. Yeah, definitely. I mean, if you look at them, they've got all their big names back. You know, I love I love the front line of, of Gasol, Randolph, and Rudy Gay. That's know. scary. It's that scary. is that's scary. And I mean, when those guys those guys really haven't had a chance to play together as a core, and now that we get to see that they're all healthy, everyone they've got their their benches their benches looking all right as well. I mean, they've got a little bit of depth there with some good big players. I mean, they could they could be anything this year. They could, I, they could take out this division. Do you see them playing against the Clippers again in the in the playoffs? Oh, I think they have I to. Think, yeah, I think it's a prerequisite. <laughs> I think so. <laughs> yeah, I, th- I think they'll probably be you know, equal to last season's achievements, if not probably better. Definitely. Now, mate, let's move uh, down to the New Orleans Hornets, where um, Anthony Davis, new number one draft pick, new start, new headline of this franchise with a new owner, and what do you see? Mate? I like the Hornets. I like what they've done. They've added a lot of you know, pretty decent players, getting guys like Lopez to come in. 
Um, you know, Davis is obviously a huge coup for them. Whether he's that impactful straight away, probably not. I think he's definitely a long-term kind of player, but you know, also Ryan Anderson's joined as well, so mm-hmm. Eric Gordon's re-signed. They've got a lot of... You know, they're yeah. starting a lot of... Al Farouk. Al Farouk, the big man himself. <laughs> How can I forget? Shout out to Al Farouk. Absolutely. I think you know this is probably the best condition that the Hornets have been in you know, for a while. Even probably while they had Chris Paul too, because in that last season, he... It was just him that was working. No one else was doing it. Yeah, I mean, David West was, was providing halftime entertainment. Yeah, he was, he was absent for that. <laughs> he was, I mean. And Austin Rivers as well. It would be good to see. He looks like he's going to start at the point guard position exactly. there. It would be good to see how he you know, starts his NBA life. Do you think he's a pure point guard, though? I think he's a bit of a combo bench guy. I don't think he's well, really... He said that he you know, formulates his game off Kobe. Yeah, so that's... Yeah. <laughs> I don't know whether he's the guy you want handling the ball every possession up and down the court. I think, a lot, actually, to be honest, a lot of that will be with Eric Gordon as well. Although he'll be playing the two guard, he'll be handling the ball a lot more than, than Austin Rivers, I think. Yeah, definitely. And um, Adam has said that uh, Davis looked very exciting against the Heat yesterday, pre-season or not. But you know, it's good to see him putting up some decent numbers out there and you know really. Yeah, exactly. I mean, he's exciting. He's an exciting player. I mean, everyone loves block shots, alley oops, and dunks, and that's what he's going to provide. So you know, there's no doubting you know, he's going to be great to watch, but. Whether he's actually, you know, that impactful offensively, prob- I don't, I don't really think he's, he's quite there with his game. But I mean, that's, you know, so far he, he's obviously got a lot of time to grow. He's still young. He's only 19, so just have to wait and yep. see. Right, let's uh, flick across now to the San Antonio Spurs, a team who has won the West um, in the, the home and away for the last two seasons. Now they're back. They're older again. Every year we're saying, you know, and everyone's saying, oh, this is the year they're going to drop off. But this year it sort of doesn't look like people are saying that. <laughs> is this the year they're going to drop off, mate? I absolutely wrote them off last season. You did. Much mate, they, weren't even the play- they weren't even in the playoffs. <laughs> it was my mistake. I, I apologise. But now, I've, you know, I think, I think they've gotten better adding, you know, adding Nando to Colo. They've you know, just put a few more fresh legs into this team. Um, Age doesn't seem to be a problem for these guys. They, it looks as though Tim Duncan. Not wary them. No, let's be fair. Tim Duncan looks like he can play for another five, six years. He he won't. But um, yeah, I'm I, I'm going to go out confidently with the Spurs this year. They will definitely be in the conversation in the Western Conference. Oh, definitely. I agree. I think that this is going to be another you know great year for the Spurs. I think they'll be up there with the Grizzlies for the top of their division. Um, I'm really liking how their backcourt's winding up at the moment. I mean, you've got Parker and Ginobili starting. Um, do you know they will start this year? Um, and that's, you know... That's huge. That's huge. huge. Having, too. Yeah, having those two guys. And then, you know, Patrick Mills, Corey Joseph, Gary Neal, Danny Green, Nando DiColo. There's Steven a lot Jackson. Of, Steven <laughs> Jackson. You know, there's a lot of good players there to, to really, you know, be able to bring on. There's but, a big rotation of guards there too. So yeah. whether the minute allocation is going to be quite difficult uh, for Popovich to negotiate. And it looks like, um, you know, for us Aussies out there, it looks like Paddy Mills will get quite a bit of court time this year, which is good to see. Yeah, I think so. And, um, yeah, he's going to get so much better training day in, day out with uh, with Tony Parker, who I think is playing the best basketball of his career. So mm-hmm. it's... If you if you have a great point guard, you're going to do pretty well, and and I think the Spurs have all the right pieces this year. And um, David has said that the Spurs are missing another big to progress any further. Um, I mean, they've got Boris Dior, Tim Duncan, Dejon Blair, Thiago Splitter there. Do you agree with him, or do you think that their their front court that they've got right now is good for them to be able to contend? A little part of me does agree. I think that they could probably use a bit of boost in quality. I, I'm a big Thiago Splitter fan, but he hasn't really shown enough to sort of. Make that no, next definitely. Level he hasn't jump. shown anything that compared to what he showed. Yeah, here. exactly. So I think they're probably you know they don't need any more players, but I think if they traded you know two or three of those guys in for an upgrade of, of just one player, I think that's probably where they need to be. But realistically, how you know, how much longer Tim Duncan will be playing for? It's it's going to be hard for them to manage that because they will have to get the, a solid replacement for him in, in, in two seasons' time. Yeah, definitely. And Adam's come out and said they'd love the Admiral to come back, play 10, 15 minutes a game. Oh, that's everyone's dream. Yeah. <laughs> he can still play. I, he strikes me as a guy that, that wouldn't wouldn't struggle to come back. I mean, I'd love to see him and Hakeem come back, but I mean, Hakeem's getting paid more to not oh, play basketball no, than he can ever get paid exactly. to play basketball. <laughs> He's on the biggest contract in the league. <laughs> Hakeem, money. <laughs> uh, Matt, now let's move over to the Northwest Division, where we'll start with... A team that, you know, just year after year continues to surprise people, the Denver Nuggets. How they've managed to come out of the Carmelo Anthony trade this well is absolutely ridiculous. And much to their credit that they've, you know, A, didn't really get that much worse once Melo left. And B, they've gone, they're better than the Knicks. <laughs> they've 
gotten younger, faster. Adding a guy like Andre Iguodala, who you know, I'm obviously quite biased, Get but with it. exactly, mate. It's, <laughs> he's he's going to add you know the one thing that the Nuggets have been notorious for not having, and that's defense, especially perimeter defense. So, are you going to buy a Nicky jersey? It's going to be hard, but I think. I think I might. I'll yeah. Maybe get some of that new uh, nice yellow road jersey nice. <laughs> action. Nice. What your has got there? Yeah, yeah, it's a classic, that one. <laughs> nice, good to see. I mean, I think this team is looking good once again this year, and I think this will be a big year for that guy right there, JaVale McGee. Yeah, I absolutely. He's, from what we saw from him towards the end of last season, especially in that series against the Lakers, I mean, you got to think that in a, from from the footage we've seen of him working in the off-season with Hakeem, you know, it looks like he's developed a couple of new moves. He's sort of, you know, Dream Shake 2.0, and he could be, you know, the oddest guy off the court and, you know, one of the best up-and-coming centres on the court because he seems like he's done Definitely. a lot to work on his game. Yeah, I think him and, him and Kenneth Farid are forming a, a, a pretty entertaining little partnership in that front court. And, you know, you add a guy like Danilo Gallinari into the mix as well, Iguodala, and then, I guess, Ty Lawson as well. This is very good, hard to defend starting five too. Yeah, I mean, are you afraid of the dark? Everyone's like, afraid of the dark. I'm afraid of the dark. <laughs> and uh, Adam said that the Nuggets are slated to be a 61-21 over-under team this year. Yeah, I'll buy that. I'm Will you buy that? that? Do you yeah. think that, that they'll be that high? Or? I think so. I think they're going to get a lot of wins just because they're, they're younger, they're fresh, and they're you know, if, they, if they can stay healthy, and obviously now with Iguodala as well, not you know, can see as many points, then yeah, I, I think it's definitely within the grasp. Now that the Oklahoma City Thunder have you know, traded James Harden, are the Denver Nuggets now the team to beat in this division? I don't think so. I think any team that has Kevin Durant is going to be the, the best team. Any team that has Durant and Westbrook is definitely still ahead of the game, I think. Definitely. And they've got Hashim to beat now, too. They yeah. <laughs> they're back. <laughs> and, um, mate, let's move on to the Minnesota Timberwolves now. I mean, enough enough Nuggets chat, really. I mean, yeah. we all think they're going to be good. We could go on for days. And, and if, if you have a look at the, the social stream here, I mean, a lot of people think they're going to be good. You know, David does as well. Um, and the Minnesota Timberwolves, I mean, they've lost Kevin Love for the start of the season, which is unfortunate, and that could really derail their chances of being a playoff team this year. I think it's going to be tough for them to try and come back from, you know, with, with, if they have a, a rough start, it's going to be hard for them to, to come back and really you know, ease Kevin Love back in and, and get to that sort of point where they are you know, contending you know, for, for, for a decent seed in the Western Conference. Although they do have guys that can probably come in and fill that void in, in Kirilenko. Uh, Derek Williams is another guy who I'm really yeah. looking forward he, to. He, I'm looking forward to seeing what he, he produces this year. Yeah, and, and obviously Pekovic as well, he's still there. He played really well last season. So I think it's it's not as bad as everyone's sort of hyping it up to be. I think they can probably get by, you know, maybe staying at around 500 until he comes back. And then when he comes back, it's obviously going to take you know, two or three weeks before he's you know, back on his feet and... Back to the old Kevin Love, that he's the that superstar he is. I'm just excited to see how Alexi Shved plays. I mean, after seeing all of, a lot of him in London, I mean, he's a guy who can come into this league and, you know, really you know, either crash or burn. He, he could be anything, or, really. Or, <laughs> yeah, he could. And, I mean, it's going it's to be good to see how, how he meshes. And, I mean, he's going to be with AK-47, uh, one of his best mates there. Um, his homeboy, AK-47. Yeah, and so, it's. I mean, I'm really looking forward to seeing that. And, I mean, as we said a couple of weeks ago, I could see him being rookie of the year this year. It's one of the, the you know, wildest shouts of all time, but it's not yeah, that unrealistic. I'm not, yeah, because I'm not saying he is my lock for Rookie of the Year this year. He should be in the conversation, yeah. at least. I agree, because he's going to score buckets back to back to back, and he's going to get noticed. I think he's going to be a real, really good X factor for the Timberwolves. Um, yeah. Whether they can rely on a guy like Brandon Roy at the two for you know, for how long, really, yeah. I think... Yeah, he's he's going to come in and take a lot of minutes from him, and uh, I think it's going to be pretty exciting. Yeah. Um, and actually, uh, David said something. Um, the Wolves are the great white hive. I am actually hoping that we do get to see the lineup of Rubio, Schwed, Karolinko, Kevin Love, and Pekovic get some court. Absolutely, together. we need to get those shorts back up. We need to get the singlets a bit tighter. We need the return. We do. It's back. <laughs> Absolutely, they've, they've done well. Who's just balls back? Exactly. Chase Buttinger just licking his lips on the bench. <laughs> Chase Buttinger will still be yeah, on the bench. Yeah, though, exactly. So we're not going back that far. No, we're not. And I mean, speaking about Ricky Ruby, I mean, it's I'm looking forward to seeing what he does in season two as well. Yeah, it's going to be hard for him having not had a you know, proper um, you know, training camp and, and preseason with his team, but he's going to come in. You know, hopefully, they're not doing too terribly and they're not relying on him straight away, but. Realistically, they will be. Uh, he's going to be expected to come back straight in from injury and, and, and really change things around for them. But um, yeah, I think I think he's going to get better. Yeah, yeah. yeah. He was playing a little bit sort of schoolyardish last season, which was great to watch. But whether they can actually manufacture wins and, and lots of them, it, it's going to be you know, hard. But 
I think he's learned a lot uh, from his, his first season in the league, so he's, he's going to put that to work, uh, you know, and, and it's only going to be positive, really. Definitely. Now, mate, Portland Trailblazers. Oh. <laughs> um, Damien Lillard should yeah. be okay. Mate, Oklahoma City Thunder. <laughs> yeah. That's about it. Really. Yeah, now let's, let's, move, let's move across <laughs> to a team who is one of the newsy teams at the moment, the Oklahoma City Thunder. No more James Harden. No, no more fear of the beard. No, no more fear. The, you can't fear the beard. You've now got to, to fear, fear, the, fear the motto. Fear Durant's 30 points a night. Fear yeah, that. exactly. And <laughs> Russell Westbrook. And I mean, say it time and time again on this podcast, this team is best when everything's going through Westbrook, when Westbrook is the number one option on the team. Because, I mean, Durant does get 30 points a game off being the number two option in this team. Exactly. Durant will find points. He doesn't yeah. need everything to travel through him. Um, yeah. A lot of people don't necessarily agree with that and say that yeah, it is Durant's team. He should be the number one option. But you, know, you look at the games where Russell has just exploded and taken over. Kevin's still scoring 30 points. <laughs> he is. He'll yeah. find buckets. Yeah, he doesn't. I mean, he's one of the best spot shooters um, and open guys in the NBA. And I mean, with his with his arm length, I mean, he, every shot's an open shot for him, basically. Every shot's a layup for him, really. <laughs> <laughs> and um, uh, David said that if you're OKC... Do you start Kevin Martin or Thabo Cephalosha or trade Martin as he's a free agent in 2013? Great question. I yeah, think, that is a really good question. Um, it's going to be very dependent on who they're playing. If you are playing against uh, a team with a great two or three guy, um, which there isn't a lot of great two guards at the moment, you want a guy like Cephalosha to, to play that lockdown defense that he does so well. But I, I'm probably more inclined to re- replace you know, that, that, that number two position with Kevin Martin. I think he's going to come in and, and score those points that you need. And... Defensively, he's probably not as, as good as Cephalosha, but um, I, I, I'd, I'd like he's to... He's a revolving door. Yeah, really. <laughs> I don't think anyone's that good compared to Cephalosha no. defensively, the two. I'm, I'm going to have to uh, agree to disagree with you because I think Thabo should still start on his team. Yeah, OK. Um, I think if it's, if it's not broke, don't fix it. I mean, they, yeah. they're... St- I mean, they've broken their bench now. But having Kevin Martin as, as that sort of, you know, have that James Harden role coming off the bench, it sort of makes this the transition to the new Oklahoma City Thunder a lot easier for them. And I do think that they let him, um, his expiring contract, go and become a free agent at the end of the season, though. Yeah, oh, we'll see how we go. <laughs> uh, Utah Jazz. Um, I actually really like, once again, really like this front court. I mean, Al Jefferson, Enos Cantor, Paul Millsap, and Derek Favors. It's big. It's, it's it big. big. It's another big team. And it's you've got to pose the question: Do you think all four of these guys will be there coming into the season, or do you think they'll use you know some of these pieces to try and you know upgrade them in some positions where they need a bit of help, such as like point guard? I mean, Jamal Tinsley's still going to see a few minutes here, and he he ain't the same Jamal yeah. Tinsley that you've seen before. Even then, you'd probably still be looking for for other options. I think they need to take one or two of these guys, reinvest, um, and yeah, get yourself a solid point guard because. There's no point having great bigs if you don't have anyone directing them around the court. So I think they need to really invest in, in getting a great point guard or even just a, a good point guard. Yeah, definitely. I mean, Mo Williams is okay. Earl Watson, uh, but they're not the sort of point guards that you think can, can you know. They're not game changers. No, they're, they're all they're kind of at the all. same level. Yeah, they are, and I mean, it's it's a real interchangeable you know, point guard rotation there as well. I mean. Bo Williams is a starter at the moment, but you know he might not be the starter in a few weeks' time. Exactly. I don't think you really lose or gain anything with either of them. They're, they're, they're pretty much the same. I'm excited to see, um, well, number one, I'm excited to see how Gordon Hayward plays in, in season two. Absolutely. Um, I'm a big Gordon yeah, Hayward fan. I really, I really enjoyed him last season. He's, you know, he, he should be on the Timberwolves, but that's, yeah, exactly. that's <laughs> really not there. Um, and Marvin Williams, you know, see him in... Yeah. It's, a, it's a new dawn, it's a new day. Is he feeling good? Maybe this is the change of scenery he's, he's needed because it's it's kind of, yeah, it, it stays in there. A lot like Bogut, he's um, his draft mate as well. Exactly, yeah. It, it sort of sticks in your head that you think Marvel Williams is, is really good you know, based on his NCAA career, but he hasn't really transferred that into the into the NBA yet. So whether he can do that at Utah, I, I don't know how much you know, how much more freedom he's going to get to to shoot the basketball. Uh, I'll just have to wait and see. Yep. Now let's go to uh, some of the, uh, the social stream. Luke said that um, they can't go forward with Jefferson Millsap, Favors and Cantor, and you know they need to they need to break it up. They need to break it up. And um, then Adam has said that he hears that uh, John Stockton's looking for work, so maybe that could solve their point guard issues. Oh, this could be the year of the comeback. Stockton and Hayward <laughs> in the backcourt together. Ah, oh, fantastic! And then oh. you got you got Robinson back at the Spurs. And um, yeah, you get get rid of Enos Cantor and Derek Favors and get Greg Ostertag back in there as Absolutely. well. Absolutely, that's yeah. what the league's been missing for years. Is Greg yeah. Ostertag. And I mean, Millsap really is come along to the point oh. Without the cowboy hat, yeah, sure, and the all-star <laughs> cred and the great basketball skills. <laughs> and the skills. All right, let's move over to the best division in the NBA, hands down. Oh, here we go, <laughs> Pacific Division, and we'll start with um, 
The team is going to be very topical, you know, down under in Sydney here and in the rest of Australia. The Golden State Warriors with their new big man, Andrew Bogan. Absolutely. And, and he's on the sideline. <laughs> As always. But, yeah, I mean, we've, we've mentioned this in, in podcasts prior. I think the Warriors are going to be, you know, if they're not successful, they're going to be great to watch. This this team looks, you know, looks great. I mean, having a big guy like Bogut coming in, making that nice little front court with David Lee... Uh, the ball movement between those two is going to be fantastic, and and also yeah, having a guy like like Harrison Barnes coming in uh, mm, yeah. through the draft, this, that's huge for them. Yeah, and I mean, and you two for Clay Thompson now. Exactly. He was he was your boy last year. Absolutely, you loved him, and I mean, when Steph Steph Curry back, you know, it's, it's going to be good to see that. If they have a full strength team this year, no, it's playoffs or bust for them. I mean, they have got like Richard Jefferson, really, um, yeah. as like, and Andreas Bedra is leading their bench. You know, they're, they're two they're two guys who could start in. Probably about 24, 20 and They're experienced guys. They're, experienced they're going to be about guys want to have there. Yeah, exactly. And then, I mean, Jared Jack, um, backup point guard, who's solid at yeah, best. Solid, solid at best, and, you know, has has, has done well in, in some other stops in his. I mean, in, in uh, at the Hornets, he sort of, you know, held his own there for quite a bit as well. Definitely. But I, th- I think a lot of the, the Warriors' success is going to hinge on, on how Andrew Bogut plays, how he settles in, and. And really, uh, having having a good big man is going to be helpful in the Western Conference. Yeah, definitely. I mean, having a big man who can pass as well, because if you have Bogut as that sort of, you know, uh, second distributor out there, it's 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 something that you know they're very lucky to have. There's not there aren't many teams in the West who have a, a good passing big man down low. Yeah, he'll spread the floor for them right. yeah, brilliantly, and and get it out to my boy Clay Thompson for that. That knockdown three. Yeah, definitely. I mean, and Harrison Barnes as well. Exactly. And it, yeah, that's exactly what yeah. the Warriors have needed is, is help at the wing position. So it's something that we haven't seen since probably about 07. The Warriors have actually got options on the court to be able to go. <laughs> exactly. To. Not a couple of guys who, who can score for them or. or they have a team. They've got they've got a whole team. <laughs> yeah. Look, I'm. I've, we'll, we'll get to the predictions later, but I've I've got them doing well. And David said that uh, Clay Thompson remind, reminds him of uh, Mitch Richmond. Is that high praise for you? I'm happy with that. I'll, I'll take Mitch Richmond. Yeah, <laughs> when, are you, when are you getting your um, Cray Clay jersey? Uh, it's got to be soon. It's, it's got to be, be soon. soon. Man. We've got to have it up there for the next live episode. Exactly. We'll try and get it in there. Now, mate, let's move across to the uh, Los Angeles Clippers. The best team in LA, the Clippers. They're back for another season. <laughs> mate, the, the Los Angeles Kings hockey team are a better basketball team than this one. I think they're the best team in general in LA, but <laughs> still at the moment. Um, still, the Clippers uh, made a few moves this, this off-season, but made a few sort of old timey moves getting Grant Hill and, and Lamar Odom in. Yeah, well, the, the sprite levels in Los Angeles are gonna go through the roof. Off the Richter there. <laughs> Sprites or Sprites and gummy bears all around. <laughs> yeah, Lamar Odom as well. Yeah. yeah, and and even Jamal Crawford too. I mean that's that's the out of all their moves that's the one that scares me the most. I mean Definitely. Odom looks like he's put on a bit of weight. Um, Grant Hill's you know, eighty seven years old next year. Granted. And um, I mean Jamal Crawford is a guy who, you know, has been proven to come off the bench and you know, lead a he lead, can, lead he a can score. Unit. He can score. And he's one of the he's one of the most clutch players in the NBA. Absolutely. Let's, let, let, let's not get that wrong. He he's a guy who can always hit down that final shot. Yeah, and that's you know that's something that the the Clippers lost, I guess, when when Chauncey Billups went down last season was that experienced guy that's not afraid to take the big shot. I mean, not that Chris Paul yeah, he's afraid to take the big shot, but generally. Chris Paul is accompanied by a couple of defenders, so it's it's nice to have a guy out there that you can trust, you know, late in games. And uh, Blake Griffin, do you think that he will, at the end of this season, be known as a better power forward than? Ah, uh, he already is. Than, uh, <laughs> than Chris Bosh. Than Chris Bosh. Absolutely, I think this is uh, a year where yeah you know, he's developed that little jump shot. Yeah, you know, he's added a few little things to his game that could take him to the next level. So I'm I'm, I'm banking on that. Looking forward to seeing it, not in preseason though. Ah, uh, look, mate, pre. Pre-season counts when it comes to Blake. And, I mean, Chris Paul, it's going to be a big year for him this year. If, the, if this Clippers team are to do what people are expecting them to do and be a contender, you know, he's going to be the catalyst for it. And, Definitely. therefore, he's going to be a guy who will be in the conversation at the end of the year for MVP. If, they, if they're as successful as they look like they will be on paper, it's, it's going to be because of Chris Paul's. So, I mean, I wouldn't, I wouldn't shy away from him uh, yeah, being in that conversation. No, not at all. I mean, it's good to have for them as well, to have Chauncey Billups back. I mean, he's such a key to that team, you know, being like the on-court coach, basically. Absolutely. He's an, he's an extension of the coach. And whenever you have a, a veteran like that that can come in and do that, especially with a pretty young team uh, in the Clippers, it's, well, I guess they've got a lot older now, but you know, their core guys aren't very old. So this is going to be yeah, great for them. All right, one, two, three, four, we've got LA War. Let's move across to the Los Angeles Lakers. According to David, the one and only team ah. in LA. <laughs> no, if there's any more Laker haters out there, please get on and <laughs> help me out. Um, 
They're you can win. talk us through. They're, they're <laughs> going to win. I don't. I don't really know what there's what to say about the Lakers at the moment. Just look. Look who. Look who they've included. Dwight Howard. That young guy called Steve Nash, yep. you might have heard of him, won <laughs> a couple of MVPs. Right, yeah. uh, a guy who you know, might be in his, on the end of his career, but you know, had a, had a 17 and 10 year last year in Antoine Jameson. Playing for the Cavaliers. Might Playing be. for the Cavaliers, but still, to be able to get those sort of numbers in the NBA at his age, and look pretty good doing it. As much as I dislike the whole Laker organisation, they're going to be very good this season. You can't, you can't deny that they have you know, four bona fide all-stars you know, on, their, on their team. Um, who do you who do you defend? <laughs> Metal World Peace. They're gonna have to double team Metal World Peace. After that. He can hit that three. Yeah, he looks pretty lean too in the off season. He's you know, doing some sit ups or running or something. He looks looks fit. Uh, I think he um I think he put his like um, iPhone on a treadmill and he was just chasing running, yeah, chasing it. <laughs> something. Couldn't send a tweet until he got that. But but realistically, the the Lakers are now a genuine contender for the if the Western Conference definitely, but also you know, for the whole thing. The one thing that worries me with this Lakers team, though, and I mean, if I was going to, you know, put a hole in their roster at the moment, it's still the backup point guard position. I mean, you got um, Steve Blake, who hasn't been able to hit a shot away from the Staples Centre since he yes, landed in yeah. LA, and this is a guy who, before he came to LA, was renowned as one of the rare guys in the league who were better on the road than at home, and he's just completely reversed that around to being absolute, an absolute idiot on the road, can't hit anything, and then I mean, Chris Duhon. Is You've it? not really no. gained anything there, but yeah, he's he's with Chris Duhon, All you can really hope is that he doesn't mess anything up. If he goes out there, passes the ball to Kobe and Dwight, and gets out of the way, that's all you can really ask for. Yeah, exactly. So I mean, I, I still see a couple of moves coming this way to sort of you know, you know improve that point guard position out there. It's gonna, it's gonna be hard for them. How, how, how much luxury, luxury tax are they paying? <laughs> Doesn't matter. It never matters. Uh, <laughs> the gold in the rings pays for the tax. Oh, enough. okay. <laughs> right. You know, you haven't heard about that in Philadelphia for a while. No, not since since Doctor J actually, <laughs> before my time. Uh, the only doctor I know is Doctor Pepper. Yeah, it's best doctor. And uh, on a side note, a bit of sad news for for us in the Lakers fraternity. Um, the mini mumba Andrew Galbock was waived today. So that's a sad day, really. Yeah. So who knows, man? He could wind up on Houston. Everyone's there these days. He could wind up at the Sixers. Yep. You guys need him. Good. We're casting a wide net of recruitment. Yeah. Um, mate, let's um, quickly jump through to the Phoenix Suns. I'm excited about the Phoenix Suns. Uh, of course you are. <laughs> Did you see Michael Beasley playing yes- the day before yesterday? I don't watch preseason. No, I love it. <laughs> <laughs> Who am I kidding? <laughs> I, think, <laughs> I think the Phoenix Suns have done quite well to, to rebuild from losing a, you know, a franchise guy, a cornerstone of this organisation in Steve Nash, you know, to, to get a guy like Oren Dragic to come back. Yeah. Is huge. A very good point guard. He was you know, very, very good last season. Into the Dragic. Exactly. Uh, Beasley is coming in. Bit of a hit or miss. You don't really know what you're going to get from Beasley. So far, he looks okay. Whether that stays around for 82 games, uh, you yeah. know. And they've got the man, always Coca Scola. Exactly. Starting that, that's powerful. One of the most underrated players in the definitely. NBA. Definitely. He's not flashy. He's not fancy, but he will. He will do the job. And as usual, he had a good Olympics for the Argentinian team, and he's. He's, he's got a history of, of going and playing for his national team and then coming back and having a great NBA season. So that's one thing that I'm really excited about with him out there. And then, I mean, God's hat. I'm a, I'm a fan of him. I think he's, he's worth the money that he's got to go there. Yeah, I think so. He's earned the money because he's, he's gotten better every year. Yeah, definitely. But, I mean, do you see them being a borderline playoff team? Borderline, at best. I think yeah. um, they could probably hover around that 8th, 9th, 10th region. I'd... We'll, we'll get to the predictions later, but I think, yeah, I, I'd struggle to put them in as a lock. Now, mate, let's uh, move quickly to Jim Fredette and the Sacramento Kings. Yeah. Last year, I think we spent about 15 minutes previewing this team. <laughs> we thought Jim was going. about 14 and a half, that was about Jim Fredette. <laughs> we thought he was going to be the, the truth, the great white hope, but it hasn't worked out that way yet. There's still plenty of time for him to, to become the player we expect him to be, but... Um, yeah, things are looking a little bit better in Sacramento. They, you know, they've you know, drafted well. We've gotten a great player in, in, in Thomas Robinson. Yep. Their front court is probably the best young front court in the league. Oh yeah, with Demarcus Cousins and, and exactly. Thomas Robinson there. Yeah, That's definitely. And also Jason Thompson as well. He's been playing quite yeah. well. And then you got um, Chuck Hayes, the old Shaft. <laughs> he keeps everything together. Yeah, he he keeps it all in check. Yeah. No, I'm, I'm I'm actually excited about Sacramento Kings this year, and I think. This young core lineup they've got of guys who seem to get along and guys who are workers, you know, adding, um, you know, Isaiah Thomas and, and Tyreek Evans into the mix there as well, and guys we're talking about. Um, it's exactly what Sacramento as a city 
really need right now if they are going to want to keep this team because they've got a team of guys who will go out and work hard every night and play hard. That's the big thing. You need to get rid of that dysfunctionality that they had going there. And it's going to get people going back there. It's going to you know give them a bit more of a chance of trying to keep the team. Do you think they'll keep the team? Do you think that the Kings will be in Sacramento for much longer? I don't think so, to be honest. But I really, I really hope it is. I mean, I've I've gone to a game out at Arco or what, what's it called at the moment? It's like Power Balance Hut. No, it's not Power Balance. It's gone. It's like it's like mattress warehouse or something uh, like that now. Joe's Plumbing <laughs> Arena. Yeah. Something horrible. But yeah, I mean, I, I've I actually got a phone call from Kevin Johnson asking if he would have wanted to be called the Believer Hype Arena. Oh, I'm happy to lend my name to this. <laughs> yeah, except you wasn't asking for any money. I, I wanted a bit of money for it. And a reverse right. sponsorship. Yeah. But, yeah. <laughs> but realistically, I think what will um, yeah, impact whether the Kings are around or not is I think the success of the Brooklyn Nets. Mm. Whether that relocation actually looks That's like a really good call. Sending that team to a, a, a bigger market, I mean, depending on where the they sort of send, looking at sending the Kings, whether it's to Anaheim or back to Seattle. Um, yeah, I think a lot of that's going to depend on how the Nets, as a franchise, do as an organisation and also as a team. So I'd, I'd probably be more inclined to think that Sacramento is a, a city and a team that you could probably see elsewhere pretty easily. Yeah, definitely. I mean, it, it'd, it'd be sad to see them go, but you know, they could be anywhere. They could be Anaheim. I still would love to see them in Vegas. Seattle is the big one who they potentially could go to, and the place where we both want to see them, Vancouver. Vancouver, we need to get a team back. <laughs> yeah. uh, David has asked us a couple of questions. Um, oh, sorry, it's the same question twice. Yeah. <laughs> it's awkward. Um, will Tariq Evans, is this um, last entire season in Sacramento, and then on to will he be traded in 2012-2013? Yes, I think he will. I think that yeah. the Kings will probably get a little bit more from uh, from Jimmer. Hopefully, I'm, I'm going to jump on him again this season. Uh, and also Isaiah Thomas. I think that they'll learn that they can probably do without Tyreek. Although mm-hmm. he's a great player, he's just not really... He, he, he reeks of everything that's sort of wrong with the Sacramento organisation, that up and down, just that dysfunctional kind of guy. I think you could probably get something really good in return for him, though, which is the yeah. big thing. So I, I think they're probably more inclined to move him. He's definitely got, you know, um, even though he hasn't really performed that well in the franchise, he's definitely got, you know, enough of a... You know, he's got the calibre, and it, yeah, exactly, and that's all you really need is, is the hype, uh, you know, and I think that's definitely still there for him to to, to, to get a move somewhere and, and get some money. And uh, Lucas said that Kings have the talent, but they don't. Uh, I don't know how it fits together, and you know, I tend I tend to agree with him. Um, you know, they do have a lot. They do have a lot of talent, but it does still remain to be seen if it can, if it can fit together and if they can definitely. mold together and become sort of like a, an Oklahoma City 2.0. I think, and a lot of that is just attitude. I, yeah. I don't think the Kings have the same sort of attitude that the guys um, at the Thunder have. They're getting better in that regard, but whether they can sort of reach that sort of level, it's, I think, a, a pretty pretty big stretch. And I've uh, got a bit more uh, Jimmer chat coming up. Absolutely. Um, Adam has said that, what about Fredette, more to the point? Less important a player, but he doesn't fit in Sacktown. You know, do, you think, do you think that they will try and move him on? Do you think that the bums on seats that Jimmer Fredette you know, gives the team every time they go to Utah, keeps them on that front in that franchise. I think the Utah Jazz need to go after him personally. I, I, I don't really think Jimmer fits the the organization or the team. He kind of looks like a bit of a spare part in Sacramento. I'd love to see him playing you know, for the Jazz. Or even I thought at one point that the Thunder could yeah. come in and, and maybe acquire him as well. There was talk of him going to the Lakers at some point last season. Mm. Probably less so well, likely. Would have loved to have had a <laughs> Perfum Gold Jimmer jersey. But yeah, but I, th- I, think, real Gold. Yeah. <laughs> I think Sacramento is ultimately not the, the final destination for Jimmer. I think mm-hmm. uh, he'll probably move on sooner rather than later. Luke thinks he might be a good fit in uh, Minnesota. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> Definitely. It's the, the, yeah, it's anything's possible. What the kids are doing. Exactly. Anything's possible. <laughs> uh, now, mate, one through eight. Or eight through one in the uh, Western Conference. What do you got? All right, coming in at number eight, I've got the Golden State Warriors. They're they're going to sneak in the playoffs for me. Uh, at seven, I've got the Minnesota Timberwolves. I think I had them projected a little bit higher until Kevin Love went down. So I think they'll probably sneak in at seven. At six, I've got the Grizzlies. At seven, uh, sorry, at five, going backwards, I've got the Denver Nuggets. Um, at four, I've got the LA Clippers. At three, the Spurs. I'm apologising for last season. Uh, two, I've got the Los Angeles Lakers, and then I think the uh, Thunder are going to be too strong again, and, and they'll have the best record. Even with James Harden? Yeah, I'm going to keep them there. Yeah, I'm going to keep them there. I think, I think there's still enough of a team to not let one guy disrupt them, unless yeah. that guy was Kevin Durant. Definitely. 
Before I get to my team, um, Adam has said that if Fredette goes to Minnesota, the franchise will need to be renamed the Minnesota Liquid Papers. Definitely. Agree or disagree? <laughs> uh, maybe not that, but we'll yeah. work on that. We'll work on that, the Marshmallows? <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Get onto Twitter and, hit and, and see if we can come up with a new name for them. Um, okay, my 8-1, uh, I've got Golden State. It's never, it's yep. never late in Golden State. Never. Um, the Minnesota Timberwolves at 7. At 6, I've got the hard-working Denver Nuggets. Um, at five, I've got the San Antonio Spurs. I've got them dropping off a bit. Slipping. Okay, yeah. But because I've got the Memphis Grizzlies being the team to beat yeah. in that division, they're very much if they are healthy. Yeah. I mean, they they yeah. are interchangeable very much. I think it'll only be a game between the two of them. Um, at three, the Los Angeles Clippers. At two, I changed about ten minutes ago into the Oklahoma City Thunder to make my Lakers number one. Okay. <laughs> I don't think the Lakers though are a playoff uh, necessarily a team who you look at them and go, oh yeah. They definitely are a you know regular season team. I think they are more of a playoff team, especially with some of the injuries that we're expecting they are going to have during this season. Um, but I just see that Oklahoma City. They're still. I still think they are the team to beat in the West come the playoffs. But I just think that you know for them to sort of re reshape find their the team, feed a little find bit, feed, yeah. even though the Lakers are doing the exact same thing. So exactly. that sort of makes my point mute. Means that Lakers will will get over the top of them. I could, very easily though could see the Clippers winning the West this year. In the regular cool, season. Yeah. Um, yeah. I, 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 I probably would disagree with you. I don't think the Clippers um, will go that far. I think they'll probably do that in the regular season, but they're probably more of a regular season team than an actual um, playoff series team. So it, I'm going to cap them uh, at, at number four. I think that there's definitely two or three teams ahead of them that will probably you know, be better than this season. Definitely. Now, mate, let's uh, quickly go to our award picks. But first question is first from David. Who's the first coach to get the sack? Ooh, good question. Um, Woodson, the Knicks are fickle. If they don't do well this year, he's gone. That's a good shout. I could, yeah. I could definitely see it being Woodson. Or uh, I don't know who the coach of the Detroit Pistons is right now, but I've been on the Pistons train. Yeah. yeah he's got to go. <laughs> I think anyone in Detroit's fireable. Yeah, definitely. Um, and mate, award picks, sixth man, first of all. Who have you got? Uh, for sixth man... Um, well, I'll start. I'll start with me. I did have James Harden. <laughs> so did I. But it's his to lose. Yeah, well, it was his to lose. Was, well, he's lost it now. Yeah. He's, he's going to be starting. So I know I can see a guy like um, Jeff Green if he's not starting. Yeah. Definitely be up there, especially if you see the numbers and, and what he's done so far this um, this preseason. Even though I say I don't watch preseason, and um, Antoine, Antoine Jameson as well. If you just you know his numbers obviously won't convert over to being seventeen and ten again. But, but effectiveness will. Yeah, effectiveness definitely. will definitely and. I've gone for a similar train of thought in, I think, Jason Terry uh, at the Boston Celtics. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, if, if he's not starting, which he probably isn't, um, I think he's going to come on, score a lot of points, and really, you know, he's going to score his own points too. And, that, and that's something that they've gained, having lost Ray Allen, is they've got a guy that can shoot off the dribble, create his own score, and he can, he can score in, in bunches too. Definitely. Now, mate, most improved player? We... I went with JaVale McGee when we talked about this a couple of weeks ago. We'll quickly run through these. Do you agree? Or who's yours? I think JaVale McGee will be up there, but I think uh, his teammate, Ty Lawson, I think mm-hmm. given that the sure. improvement... Both going Denver. Yeah. <laughs> well, I think because the team's improved as a whole, um, these guys are both probably going to be the ones that will benefit the most from it. Having a guy like Iguodala at, um, you know, at, at the 2 or 3, wherever he is playing for Denver, um, it's going to be great for Ty Lawson. And also, you know, JaVale's getting better, so Ty Lawson's going to get better, and vice versa. So. Definitely. And uh, David agrees with you that Jason Terry um, is his six-man pick. Now, mate, uh, Rookie of the Year. Rookie of the Year. Um, hotly uh, discussed topic, this one. It seems yeah. as though everyone has locked in Anthony Davis uh, for Rookie of the Year. I haven't. <laughs> everyone else has. But uh, I'm, I'm going to go for Damian Lillard at Portland. I think it's a, it's a numbers game and a minutes game, and I think he's going to get the most exposure probably straight away. Mm-hmm. And I think that's if he can keep some sort of level of consistency going into the back end of the season... He's a guy that I think is going to definitely be in the conversation, and I'm going to have him down for the win. I agree with you. He's up there for me. Him and Michael Kidd Gilchrist are my big two. Yeah. I think it's going to be a, a dogfight between those two. Gil- Kid Gilchrist purely because I can see him sort of turning that franchise around a tiny bit this yeah. season, and then that sort of get the props. And then Lillard, as you said, purely because of the minutes factor, he's going to get a lot of minutes out there. And so his stats are going to be yeah, his stats going to be bit. yeah buffed a bit and. But then, I mean, said Alessi Shved's my sleeper. He has to be, mate. <laughs> Very good. Well, my sleeper's going to be Bradley Beal, then. I think, I think we can expect big things from Bradley Beal, yeah. uh, especially with Wall out for, for some time. And now, mate, the big one, the most valuable player. Uh, it's, it's hard to not give it to LeBron James. I think he's 
he's primed for another good season. He, he looks like he's gotten better from last season. He looked great at the Olympics. So I'm going to give it to him. My dark horse is probably Chris Paul. What about yourself? Yeah, um, I totally agree with you. I think it's going to be LeBron James. And I think that if, uh, as I said, I think that there's a good chance that the Clippers could win the West this year. Yeah. And if that happens, I think it's going to be hard not to... If vote, there's been a bit of voter fatigue around LeBron that Chris Paul gets it. So... I think, and then obviously Kevin Durant's in the conversation, and now Definitely without Hart, now without Hart, and he's probably going to have a couple more shots a game as well. Exactly, I think you touched on a great point there. People like to see the MVP change; they don't like yeah. to see the same guy win year in year out. So, and Chris Paul's a very likable guy. So if he's playing well, the Clippers are doing well. It wouldn't shock me to, for him to win the MVP. Yeah, not at all. And um, I mean, David said that he's Rondo MVP. Rondo, <laughs> who knows? If, if well. If the Boston Celtics are going to do anything this year, Rondo has to be at an MVP level. And, and he's 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 their go-to guy now. He's the franchise player, so their success will come from him. So yeah, I think that's that's as good a shout as any. Yep, mate. I think that's all from me. That's the season preview. Yeah, and the only four more days to go. Yep, four more days to go, guys. And you know, remember to watch it wherever you are on whatever network, um, and even on NBA.tv if, if if you're using that wherever you are. And um, yep, yeah, stay. You know, be sure to tune in next week. We'll be we'll be back again for an audio audio version. We'll probably have another live video one up very soon too. Hopefully soon. Yeah, we'll get yeah. one back up. And uh, remember to go to believethehypenba.com for um you know we have gags and stuff up on the site all the time. And then also uh, Instagrammies, which has been going quite well. Yes, yeah, so we're into week three of the Instagrammies. Keep sending them through uh, via Twitter, Facebook, or any other means. And we'll try and get those up on the site. Uh, each week there'll be uh, one player that'll be chosen for their Instagram. And if people want to find us, where do they go? They know what to do. Uh, Facebook or Twitter at, at TRA Reed and at Ben Yum Kadane. And yeah, just keep the last coming. And uh, thanks very much, guys, for tuning in. Really appreciate it. We'll see you next time, guys.